Deep research in AI. Have you heard about all the tools that are now available? It's amazing. When we began this year, there really weren't any deep research tools available. We're now not even two full months into the year, and we've got multiple options. In fact, just yesterday, as I record this on February 26th, just yesterday, ChatGPT rolled out their deep research tool for all of their Plus and their Pro users, so it's now super accessible. What are we going to do? We're going to take a look at those top tools today and show you all the tools you have for deep research. Some free, some paid, and almost all of them amazing. All right, so as I mentioned, there are multiple ways for us to access various AI deep research tools, and we're going to walk through some of my favorites right here and show you. The first brand new, just released to Plus users in the last 24 hours is from ChatGPT. Just open up your normal ChatGPT. As long as you're a Plus or a Pro subscriber, that means paying at least $20 a month, you should now have access to deep research. And that simply means you type in whatever your query is, and we're going to go ahead and do deep research. And we're going to go ahead and put in a simple query today so that we can try that out and see how it works for everybody. Everybody can kind of give their perspective on what you think would we'll run the same query through multiple multiple tools. So for fun, again, I'll use the same prompt. This time we're going to say research the perfect prompting framework from Jonathan Mast, that's me, and Whitebeard Strategies, that's my company, and compare and contrast it to other prompting frameworks. Now we could do a search about this and it would bring up search results, but deep research is a bit different. Let's go ahead and kick it off and we're going to click it off right here in ChatGPT. So the first thing it's going to do is it asks what we're researching and then we're going to go ahead and press the down arrow or the, up, the go arrow, there we go, and it's going to ask us a couple of clarifying questions questions potentially that it wants us to know. Let's take a look here a minute and then it'll go on and move on with that after that. So here we go. We've got a couple of quick questions. Let me answer these real quick and we'll see where we can go. I'd like you to compare and contrast the perfect prompting framework with other popular prompting frameworks and methodologies that you can find online. I'd like you to let me know how it compares as far as the expected results from AI as well as the simplicity of use as some frameworks are very complex and the perfect prompting framework is relatively simple and straightforward. I'd then like your recommendations based on your research as to what makes this or others the best framework to use. So there we go. Let's go ahead and try that out and see where we go. Now again, different models may give us slightly different questions or not even ask them. So it's gonna go ahead and start doing this research. While it's doing this, I'm gonna pop over to Grok, which is another one, which here we see starting research. We're gonna ask this same question. So we're gonna click on our deep research. We're gonna paste in that exact same question so we can give it as compare as possible. This is using the new Grok 3 model that was just released last week. Uh, and this is also a paid plan, just like ChatGPT. So you can see it's moving into thinking mode and researching. It's gonna come back. Let's go to my third option, which is perplexity. And perplexity actually gives us two different ways to do this. Again, on the pro plan, you can use their normal pro search, but we can select the deep research here, which is what we can use, or we could use the deep reasoning with R1. But we're gonna go ahead and stay with deep research to keep everything fair. And I'm going to paste that prompt in here and we're going to see what it does as it compares and contrasts and pulls this information apart. One of the nice things about the way Perplexity does this is notice you can leave the screen and they let you know that you can actually get a desktop notification because I want to note out that deep research takes a lot longer than a normal AI response. A normal AI response might take a few seconds, maybe, maybe 10 or 15 seconds on the long side but deep research can oftentimes take minutes, sometimes as many as 10 minutes to get you that information. We'll let it run in the tabs here that's running no problem. Next one we're gonna to go to, and this one I'm sure will get us some, some booze, but we're gonna go over to China and we're gonna use the deep seek tool that's out there. Uh, this is one of the newest tools that's been available and we're gonna go ahead and do this. Again, I'm testing this out so that you don't have to worry about it. And we're gonna click that on, there we go. So deep think R1 is on and let's go ahead. And we're going to run this. The benefits of DeepSeek, DeepSeek is the first of these platforms we've looked at that is available for free to do this deep research. So you can go ahead and do that and notice it's starting to think through and it's actually showing us the process. One of the things I actually really like about this is it does show you the thinking process that it goes through. Let's go to another tool that I really like, and this one's also free. It's called Storm from Stanford University. This works just a little bit differently, but the research it produces is really amazing. And again, it's a free tool, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. I may have too many words. The one downside is that they only allow you to put in 20 words at a time, but I think we might be close. Let's find out. 
and they're going to tell us that Storm also comes up and asks us for some clarification when we do this. Now, I know it talks here about wanting to write an article, and looks like we got a little error there. By the way, you're going to get errors like that that pop up on virtually every tool from time to time. And the reason you're getting those is simply the fact that those tools are being used by so many people, we're getting server issues that come up. So here's a good example. We just pressed reload and it worked fine. Storm, I like it. It asks you, why, why do we use this research for? And it will use this in the context of what it's doing. It's one of the things, candidly, Storm's one of my favorite tools, and it's free. Super cool. So what's the purpose for this research? And I want to do it so that I can have research to create a blog post and social posts and ultimately a video script on this topic. So we're going to give it three things that we want to accomplish. We're going to press submit. Notice it tells us right here it may take about three minutes. Sometimes it takes more or less. So we've went over four tools so far. I'm going to show, actually, yeah, five tools so far. I'm going to show you one more, and that's Google's. Let me switch my window here so we can see that. All right, so now I'm into my Google account. I had to switch windows because Google has this weird thing going on. You can only get access to their deep research tool with a Gmail address. Even though I use G Suite or G Google Workspace for my business stuff, I actually can't access this model through there. I've got to go ahead and use my Gmail address to do so. So I've done that. That's why it looks just a little different. And we're going to go ahead and paste in the same query here. And we're going to let it rock and roll. Ironically, if you know me, I'm not a huge fan in general of Google's AI. But in this case, I think it has one of the best deep research tools that's available. Uh, currently, as I'm doing this, it's the version 1.5. I'm expecting to roll this out in their newest 2.0 version soon. But 1.5 is no slouch. So we'll see here. It's going to take that query and ask what we want. We're just going to have it go ahead and start the research. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for a minute so we can go back until each of these are done. We'll show you how long it took and how they each turned out. All right, our deep research is done. Let's take a look and see what they came up with. So first, we've got ChatGPT using their deep research. This took the longest to do by far. It actually took us 14 minutes reviewing 20 sources, as you can see here. But came up with some pretty good stuff as we went through. Um, good document. By the way, I'm going to take each of these, put them in a Google Doc. So you guys can compare them if you're interested, but lots of information, probably the most in depth. Uh, it reads well, overall really well done. Uh, again, good information. I'm, I'm pleased. And you can see we've got lots and lots of information here. Definitely in my mind, currently the best result, the most in depth response, the best research came here from ChatGPT. It's, it's absolutely a winner. Let's take a look. The next one was Perplexity. So Perplexity did a great job, not near as much content, but still did a good job overall. I like the fact that they threw in uh, a table here. Now I'll admit this table is totally made up as far as I can tell. So you got to check your data sources and make sure that everything's there. Want to make sure that everything does indeed make sense. Um, and here's the link. We could then go look at that. Um, I know, for example, that's a site. For, it's from our site. We don't have a table on that like that. That didn't happen. So negative here for perplexity. Uh, that data obviously is not true. We didn't evaluate 1,200 marketing professionals uh, and do a, a formal study. So watch your data as with normal with AI. We got to make sure. So overall, again, not bad, but major flaw there in the fact that one, not as much data came through and what did come through, some of it was just obviously totally made up. Let's go over and take a look at Grok. So we took a look at Grok here. This took 39 seconds, so much, much faster, more similar to what we did with Perplexity as far as time. And you can see we've got a pretty good amount of data here. Have not had a chance to review all of it, but the part that I skimmed, it all looked good uh, and did look to be more accurate in general. It also picked some specific other frameworks to compare to. So overall, again, I'd say quality is very good. Still not on par with OpenAI, but very good overall. Let's take a look at DeepSeek. So we went and we took a look at DeepSeek. The Chinese competitor took 48 seconds here. And again, I will put all these, as I mentioned, into a document so you guys can compare them and see. Again, fairly limited information. I got to say, I'm probably least impressed with this. Perplexity didn't blow me away either. And let's take a moment here and take a look at now Google as we went in and take a look at Google here. So here is Google's deep research. Oops, get on the right tab. There we go. So we're on 1.5 advanced search and we've got quite a bit of data here again. Uh, good overall. This process took about four to six minutes. Uh, I didn't have an exact time here, 
but did get through everything. Lots of links to take a look at. One of the things I like about Google, lots and lots of sources. And of course, if you need this data, it's super easy. You just click on open in docs and it automatically opens it in a Google doc and is ready to rock and roll. There you go, just like that. So this gave us actually 10 pages of content with the notes. Uh, so overall, again, probably one of my favorites. I would say Google and OpenAI, just seat of the pants, are very close and then the rest of them fall behind when it comes to that. So we'll put all these in a Google Doc for you to take a look at or a number of Google Docs. Would love to hear your thoughts and uh, do this. And I want to encourage you, try the deep research out. It's impressive. It's amazing what it can do. You still got to watch though. So make sure that you're checking your facts before you just blindly rely on everything that's there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the overview we've done on all the various deep research tools that are out there. There's a ton of them and they all do a great job, some better than others, and they all have different price points. So I want to encourage you to try these out and find out for yourself the benefits of using AI to do deep research instead of just simple searches. Candidly, my mind's been blown and I can think of tons of applications for all this deep research. I'd love to hear from you. How are you going to use this new feature and how are you going to make it make your life better?